Amazon Games launch of New World, the hotly anticipated action combat MMO looms tall, barely more than a week away as I'm recording this. And while it's extremely common for multiplayer online games to go pretty conservative on the graphical side of things, in a sensible effort to make sure as many people as possible can actually run it so the player base stays nice and healthy, even if large chunks of that player base have rather humble PCs or laptops. New World is a bit more aspirational in its presentation, with the designed intent of doing a lot more churning on the back end, on the server side, than most MMOs do, using Amazon's own powerful server infrastructure and therefore leaving more local processing power on the user side to ramp things up in the game as far as presentation goes. At least, that is how it's supposed to work in theory. But all that going on, it can actually still be a bit of a pig to run, even on quite powerful machines. Not catastrophically so, not by today's AAA standards certainly, but absolutely noticeably a bit more power thirsty than many modern MMOs and many modern MMO players might be anticipating. But before we kick on, hello again, I am Blunty, and I want to survey you guys a bit. If you played the beta, what hardware were you running? And what settings and performance did you hit on? Pop it in the down below and we'll see if we can crowdsource some interesting data because I got some interesting data all on my own. So let's talk about the graphics performance. Now, these tests were done on a pre-release client, the open beta that happened in the second week of the month. And as an open beta, it won't necessarily represent the exact build of the game client will be getting at launch. Therefore, it doesn't necessarily represent the final performance we can expect at launch. And aside from all that, we obviously don't even have optimized drivers yet from Nvidia or AMD, which can also help kick things along. So, I won't be doing a big old deep dive here with charts and frame rate graphs flowing across the screen and all that kind of stuff, but at the same time, we can expect the relative differences between the graphics quality settings to remain pretty close, if not identical, to what we saw in the beta, and certainly the quality of the textures and detail presented will be consistent. And like I alluded to, there's something very interesting and very vital that players really should know about before launch happens, so let's dive in and talk about it. What you are seeing on screen right now is a side-by-side -side of the game running in 4K at high settings versus 4K at low settings. We'll take a look at some more subtle and useful comparisons in a moment, and you will have to forgive the time of day difference in these recordings as well. I did a lot of testing and it's just impractical to get it all done in the same in-game time. But for the purposes of comparison between detail and texture and atmospherics and the amount of ground clutter and the like, these are the two extremes you can hit in the game. Admittedly, an impractical example, as it would be a bit silly to run 4K only to turn the graphics settings all the way down, but a clear example at the same time. That's kind of the point I'm trying to drive at here. But now then, how about this comparison? Can you guess what settings these two are running at? You know, I'm the one who played the game, I'm the one who recorded this, I'm the one who edited this footage, and if I didn't know which one I recorded at which in-game time, frankly, I'd struggle to tell you which was which without freeze framing or pixel peeping past four times magnification. And this is the start of one of the big points I wanted to drive with this video. So in my testing, at 4K, at 1440p, and 1080p, there was basically no point at all in running at very high settings. In fact, it was deleterious. For all intents and purposes, and especially so while actively playing, I can't really tell the difference between very high and high settings, except for one very important factor, which sticks out like the proverbial sore thumb. The frame rate. The game has a significant performance leap when dropping from very high to high, and it's the difference between floating between 40 and 55 FPS on average and cramming right up against 60 FPS cap at 4K. And that 60 FPS is where I find the sweet spot frame rate for this game sits, given its action combat and reliance on precise timing of attacks and dodges and blocks, including anticipating your iframes and your grit with certain moves. It really is very beneficial to have a nice, stable, high frame rate, so 60 FPS is what I want to target here. Also worth noting here is I'm using the gross graphics settings, setting all the options at a consistent state, so all the different options are set at very high, or all the different options are set at low end, etc. Now at launch, when we're dealing with final code and optimized drivers, there will be value in spending more time fine tuning a bit more. Shadow quality, for instance, was quickly isolated during the betas as one of the more frame rate sapping settings. 
So turning that down was one of the quickest and easiest way to boost your frame rate back up again. So it may well be best to run on high settings, but drop shadows to medium to lock in on a more stable 60. I want to wait and see for the final version before I start fiddling with that stuff. Interestingly, at 4K, the bottleneck isn't the graphic settings alone. Here's high versus medium, where we see a much more minor difference in frame rate. At least while we're in town, an area in-game where everyone sees frame rate drops regardless of hardware or settings. And rather interestingly, you still get the frame rate drops even if the town is empty or basically empty. I specifically chose a time of day and a town to do these tests in where I knew there would be extremely few people floating around so I could eliminate the number of local players players as a variable. Out in the world though, it's a bit more consistent to the gap between very high and high. That said, given the drop in clarity of textures and detail, this is where I would personally draw the line. I will choose a lower resolution at high settings over keeping 4K at medium, all else and in particular the frame rate being equal. I love the extra clarity at 4K, especially for UI items and text in menus and lore pages and such, but for the most part, the game just presents nicer at 1440p high than it does at 4K medium, at least until you go pixel peeping. Interestingly though, this is the first place we see the GPU drop below near constant 99% utilization, which means something else in the pipeline just became the performance bottleneck, at least in my system, an RTX 3070 tied to a Ryzen 9 3900X, so not really a slouch of a gaming machine. And it's at 1440p where I can reinforce what I was talking about a moment ago. The visual difference between very high and high settings doesn't really reflect the huge performance difference they represent in game. In the case of 1440p, it's even more pronounced, from barely scraping 60 FPS to easily hitting triple digits. So either there's some sort of bug here, or Very High is doing something extremely computationally expensive for very little payoff visually. Either way, I'd once again advise to try both and see if Very High seems worth it on your own system to you. I'm guessing it probably won't. I didn't do quite as extensive testing at 1080p, frankly because 1080p has been kind of dying out for some time now as the desirable sweet spot, and 1440p is becoming the new desired standard for those without the working need or gaming desire for 4K, or indeed budget enough for the kind of hardware to not only run, but display 4K PC gaming at its best. But I did quickly find we see the exact same differential at 1080p when it comes to high versus very high. And as you can see even more clearly here, my GPU is a long way from being the bottleneck here. It's barely more than half utilized. So it might be a disk I.O. thing, although I was of course running it on a fast SSD. It might be the CPU, but seeing as I'm burning along on a Ryzen 9 3900X with 24 very well cooled cores humming along at 4 GHz or better, if it is the CPU, it must be something the game isn't multi-threading very well, because I had tons of overhead. But whatever the reason, it's clear to me very high settings are just simply not worth it. So take that with you to launch, I reckon. I know many of you might be like me and really want to turn all the graphics settings all the way up and max them out just for the sake of the flex of it, for the knowledge that you're seeing the game at its best possible presentation. Also, you can smirk at your very powerful gaming rig with a smugness only PC gamers are this good at. <laughs> but I will set aside that, that smugness. I will tone down my smirk for this game because fact is running it at high settings is just a better experience and I barely tell the difference until I really go looking for it. And chances are better than even given YouTube's compression, you won't be able to tell at all by the time you get your eyeballs on it. So at game launch, I'll be starting at 4K, I'll be starting at high settings, I'll maybe pull something down to medium to nail that 60 FPS. We'll have to see how things go at launch. So will end how we began. If you played beta, what hardware were you running and what settings and what performance did you hit on? Thanks very much for watching. Thanks as always to the patrons scrolling up above, whose above and beyond support I value very much. Thank you guys. And thank you to the rest of you for making it to the end of the video. Hopefully along the way you've done the sub and the bell and the thumbs and whatnot and share it out. Thanks for watching. I am Lottie and I will catch you next time.